Hey, what's up, everybody, and welcome to Dog Talk, the show where we talk about um, Creature Quest, because that came out yesterday, and today is Monday the 19th. We are officially in a post-Creature Quest world, so today we're going to talk heavy spoilers about Creature Quest. Being in a post-Creature Quest world feels wrong. It does. I've lived in a pre- Creature Quest world my entire life, and now it's changed. This is true. This is true. As he was saying, for those who don't know what Creature Quest is, it's the new uh, short film film I, uh, on the Pudog 3 channel. Yeah. Go check it out. It came out yesterday. Mm-hmm. It's the best the best thing since toasters and sliced bread mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. combined. And uh, I assume, because we are recording this before this is out, but... Uh, we have made a lot of, like, very big criticisms of this and a lot of, like, jokes about our criticisms. So we are here to answer any questions, if at all. Watch we make this video and everyone perfectly understands literally everything about the movie. Everyone understands everything. Are we asked questions? No one cares about these questions. The comments are filled with other questions. Yeah, the questions will be realize. like, why did QST a sniper have his mask off most of the movie? What was up with the creature cave? What is that? What is that? What is that? <laughs> Why didn't we go back there a lot? What is going on? Now, before we get into these these questions, concerns, criticisms, whatever, I want to get into, you know, this movie. I liked a lot of it. I love the creature cave, speaking of it. Mm-hmm. That was, it's so, like, so cool. I think that might be the best set we've ever done. I think so. It definitely had the most effort put into it. It took us, like... Uh, I think it, this it's a competition between this set and the um, Ethan Johnson Halloween Spooktacular Halloween party, but of like the time we put into the setup of it. The set design was so interesting that even though I was there both times when we made it, uh, once as a test, once as like a real thing, I still, as we watched it, I was like, what is this? And I, would, I kept on pointing things out in the background. Mm-hmm. If you didn't read everything in there, go back and watch it. And yeah. Go look at all the little signs on the wall. Yeah, there's a little, there's little like Easter eggs all over this movie. I mean, the creature cave alone has like, probably like, you could make a whole new rock stars video on that. I also, what's up with all these little creatures? You know, where are they coming from? These creatures from the quest? The, the, the gnomes, of course, the creatures from the quest, these gnomes and these these Leroy Locks, where, what are they all about? Where are they coming from? And the from? Flying think... Men and the other Poodog 2, all these guys. <laughs> where do we think these little things are coming from? What is, where, where have they been all this time? I can answer your little woes right now because they are all products of Bestigia, Ethan Johnson. From the Poodog mm. 3 YouTube channel. What is this? Your 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 MacGuffin? Yeah. Oh, all my problems. Any questions you have, it's Bestigia's fault. Yeah, it's Bestigia's fault, guys. Um, <laughs> anything anything that I ever did wrong, if there's like ever an audio mistake or a visual mistake or I break the 180, <laughs> yeah, I'm blaming it on Bestigia. It's just some weird witch magic that uh that we just did right there. Uh, Bestigia's always like, I, I I'm joking about it, but like no, it makes sense that she's able to do this because she is like omnipresent Mm -hmm. she has like superpower she's so powerful and she just never does anything ever yeah she kind of just chills and grants wishes in the in the woods and then she like disappeared at the end of the poodog movie too like not on camera but like they say it in creature quest that she left the woods so usually she she grants wishes right why would she give the night flyer this flying ability I, you know, if that wasn't his wish, do you, do you want to know like the, the reason behind it? Or do you want to know like, uh, me just tiptoeing around it? What do you want? What do you think I should say on this episode? Uh, four of Dog Talk? I mean, would you explore this in a later thing? If, if not, just give the full reason it, you know, I don't know if I'll ever like explore in depth because the thing about the night flyer is we can't, if we film in like five years, we can't like shoot with this same age night flyer we can't use the same guy at the same age you know because it's... then i think we just i think we just disclose it you think the, we just the viewers disclose want it? to know man the fans i'm i'm the voice of the fans you're the, the voice of the, of the fans viewers. they want to know okay well they, i'll i'll give they you all sent me emails asking this i'll so. give a great answer so as he says in creature quest i'm paraphrasing here he 
heard the sound of a bell and then magically could fly. So my thought process behind this of why he got this ability is because he tried to make a deal with Bestesia and asked something like kind of like a like a twisted wish, you know, like where he said, hey, can I do this? Like, can I go to high heights in my career or something like that? And he disobeyed what Bestesia asked of him. Like, she was like, hey, bro, you can do this and I can grant your wish. You can be very successful in your career. But you have to, like, not steal a cookie from the cookie jar. I don't know what the exact thing he did wrong was. I didn't think that far ahead. But why he can fly is because he did the thing that was, like, not asked of him. He did it. And his wish just never came true. But whenever Bastija disappeared from the woods, all her, like, wishes she had on, like, pending mode just went to everything like all the wishes that she never granted and stuff so technically if the apple pen was still not broken it could work my my question is does this mean that the night flyer went to poo dog's house before because that's where Bastija canonically lives next to your house yeah i mean she's or, my neighbor or is she just kind of like a genie she just kind of answers the wishes of the people no, she he definitely went to Poodog's house before, but also Nightflyer, I don't know how much he would remember that because uh yeah, I've had a very established in Creature Quest that he has horrible eyesight and horrible memory. <laughs> like, I feel like like he kind of is just like hyper fixated on one thing and just does it and he doesn't have very good eyesight either. I mean, speaking of the knife flyer, the knife flyer, the actor, what, what was his name? I, Logan. I don't know him. Logan. I never filmed with him. Yeah. Lo- he's such a good actor. He is really good. Like, he yeah. Because I never met him. Mm-hmm. This is kind of like, you know, in the movie, we're in the same scene, but we weren't because uh, conflicting schedules and stuff. Yeah. So, uh, Emil here had to film with him just one on one. But he did such a good job. Mm-hmm. Whenever we were actually filming it, it was Brayden. And Brayden, I know you're watching this. This is no hate to you, but Brayden did not do as good of a job as Logan did. Yeah. I mean, Logan, so Logan at my college, I met him. He was in like a play. So he was kind of fresh off of that. And he was very like used to like the whole acting thing. So that's why I was like, hey, man, I, I will, if if you want, you can play a little creature in my quest because you have... Let me be in one of your short films back in college where I played like a Patrick Bateman type. And if you guys want, <laughs> I can like set up a link somewhere and you guys can see the Poodog 3 acting as Patrick Bateman short by Mr. Nightflyer himself, Logan Talley. And he said yes to my arrangement and he was the Nightflyer. He is probably the only person I've had on a Poodog set that was like reading the script and then being like, okay, so this is how I need to do... And he was kind of not just reading the script, but also interpreting the script. But no, I can definitely concur. The average time when we're like filming something, like especially with me, I'm usually there in the writing room. I go over the scripts, and then like I'm still like, um, I don't know what to do. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> like, And that's how most of us are. Or we just think we know, and then we don't do it right. Yeah, like... Y- you don't know the lines. I mean, I had fault of doing this before because especially if somebody's kind of just like telling me, all right, this is your line because this is in the easiest way to do it for us in like a fast mannerism is to just have someone feed the lines to the person on camera if they're like just sitting there, you know, and they're not really having to talk to anybody. We'll rehearse it if we have like two people having like back and forth lines, but usually we'll just have someone feed the lines. And if... If there ever is someone feeding the lines, they don't usually read the lines, like, between it. So it's not really us interpreting what's happening. So it's kind of just, like, we don't know the way it's supposed to do it. And I think maybe that's a fault of me as a director. I think maybe we just need to change up the way that we're acting on set and stuff. And we need to just kind of lock in and everybody knows what this plot is, how they're supposed to be acting, and what scene and stuff. Um, It might have also been a thing where Logan has never filmed before, and it was also just you two. Mm -hmm. Because usually on set, it's like 
everyone's just kind of goofing off. Yeah. Or they're ready to get it over with, and there's gonna there's like someone says a line, and it's like okay, your line is they read the line, and they don't even wait for like a three, two, one action. What they do is they just say it's like let's say Ethan was feeding the lines to me. Ethan goes, okay, your line is I love baked potatoes, Ethan, and then immediately after he says that, like I don't wait for him to do a countdown or anything, I just say I love baked potatoes, Ethan. Yeah, and sometimes it happens so quick that it's like they don't even let they wouldn't even let me like finish. Yeah, saying the I love baked potatoes, Ethan. Mm-hmm. It would be like a, as I'm finishing my word, they would start theirs. Yeah, they're like, okay, I love baked potatoes. Got it. No, but you have to say Ethan after it, and it's like, oh, well, I didn't realize. It's that I think that's one of the biggest problems of being on a Pudog set, and that's the biggest difference I think from a Pudog set and like a student film set is. Since we've done so many of these, we have been, like, kind of brain rotted into just having, like, just being like, okay, we'll do this, okay, we'll do this, let's do this, let's do this, let's do this, and kind of just, like, going quick and quick and quick. And if there was any movie that we realized that most on, it was definitely this one, because we had a lot of moments like that, especially with the whole movie kind of just being um, me, Ethan, and QSTS Sniper, Mason in it yeah it was it was hectic at some points but i mean overall it came out good i honestly i i liked the whole thing yeah and we watched it favorite scene we watched it without music because as you're hearing this we did not edit any music into it just yet but my favorite scene i do still think um is the first time the night flyer shows up and takes the gnomes, and then we, like, crash the golf cart and stuff. I think that is my favorite part of the... My my favorite is probably either the creature cave or, like, uh, Night Flyer Demasked. Mm-hmm. Because it, it is um, just kind of a conversation, but it's, like, funny. The creature cave is just so... It's so interesting because, uh, for, first off, lag soda appearance, you know, my goat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, and then the, the whole cave so this is kind of getting the behind the scenes stuff but the it's a shed so qscs sniper's house is my house and the creature cave is a shed in my backyard Mm -hmm. and and it's it's so interesting because that shed is like usually like decrepit but then you go in there and it's like oh it actually looks really cool and you look around and it's like there's so many things like um Here's another viewer question. In the Creature Cave, there's the grunge sign. What does this mean in-universe? It means that I wanted to have an Easter egg in the scene. That Canonically, that means nothing. I'm going to say that right here on Dog Talk Episode 4. I'm sorry, all of you with your little little lore notebooks out being like, Oh, what's he going to say that I've got to put in? No, guys. That that doesn't mean anything. It's just an Easter egg. Does this mean that uh, QSTS Sniper is a fan of the grunge? Maybe so. Maybe... If it would, or does he just know about the road? If it means anything, it either means he knows about the road and that road exists in lore and in the Grunch lore, or it means that he has just seen the short film or something. But I'm not going to go too deep into it. Grunch is not a real thing in the Dog universe. Now here's okay. Well, I get I get you're saying it's not a real thing, but here's my my. You know, I'm taking a derivative of what you said. If he's seen the short film, does this mean that Pudog 3 on his off days goes take acting jobs for short films? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> he's starring in um in The Grunch. He might, <laughs> as a uh, little Freddy. He might be. Or we don't know. Maybe that could have been Pudog 1 or Pudog 2. It could have been. It really could have been <laughs> one or two. We don't know. <laughs> we really don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean but, there's there's three of them, so well who knows? I mean, what about these um, these gnomes? You know, when what? Why do they turn into st- rocks under some light but not under other? Okay, so the way the gnomes work, because I know it is a little confusing, because there is like kitchen light, and then there are little creature gnomes, and then in the sunlight they turn into statue gnomes. So. The way the gnomes work, the way I intend them to work, is that these 
gnomes can kind of do whatever they want as long as they're kind of like not touching direct sunlight. But once they touch direct sunlight, they turn into garden gnomes. And that's kind of what Gene Green was saying in that interview. He says, like, in the day, they're normal garden gnomes that sit in your garden and do nothing. But then at night, they turn into creeps. So in the um, at nighttime, they, they kind of work underneath, like, kind of like freeze tag rules. So if they want to unfreeze during the day another gnome has to touch them and (laughs) if not they just have to wait until like it's dark outside but if the the both the gnomes are frozen they stay frozen until they are kind of like reset by the night flyer and he knows how to do that i have a a funny image in my head of like because grabfoot was just outside turned into a statue and then grog showed up in freedom but he would have had to go through the sunlight to save him. So I'm just imagining him walking around with a giant umbrella mm-hmm. to to ward off all the sunlight. He's like he's like going through like a battlefield. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, where did these gnomes come from, and why do they live with him? Well, they, the night flyer. Well, what he him? says at the end, they're they're gnomes running from a witch, and the witch is Bestigia. They somehow were one of her little creations. Apparently, she doesn't just grant wishes, and she doesn't just bing chilling all day long. She also just does some things for herself. Like, she makes little creatures, apparently. I wonder if she made Leroy Locke. I have not, I have not set up an origin for him. <laughs> Leroy Locke is like a weird little guy. He's, he's very dapper. I feel like he should be British. Mm-hmm. I feel like he could be British. Whenever he talks, I, I, I feel like a, a little, hello, chap, could come out, and it would be perfectly fitting. It would. He's also so, like, he's very Muppety, too, and I love him for that. Um, if you guys didn't know, Ethan, should, should do, can, are we allowed to say Ethan's girlfriend? I assume we are, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. My, my girlfriend, Jayla, she made the puppet. She designed it. I mean, Technically, AI designed the original thing, but it looked so different than he ended up being. Yeah. Uh, me and Emil, we, we typed in, like, random things on the AI and got, like, oh, this is the creature we want it to look like. And we sent that to her, and she was like, what is this? Well, may, okay, so they, okay, hold on. Let me let me explain the whole AI thing first. So what was happening with the AI, when we were thinking about Creature Quest, we were like, let's think of some creatures that we can put on this quest and then we organically thought of, like, the gnomes and stuff. And then we started, like, thinking of, like, funny names, like Nightflyer and stuff. Nightflyer was, his design wasn't, like, AI generated. I just wanted to have kind of, like, a plague doctor guy. And he's, like, he's a night flyer, so he would be, like, a bird, you know. But the, the Leroy Locke, we originally had a name for him. It was called the Doorkeeper. <laughs> and we thought it was just like the funniest thing ever. I remember exactly it's how I came up with it. It was, it was a horrible name. I and mean, we were like, yeah, that's great. We're going to make the doorkeeper. <laughs> so whenever we, I remember what would happen. Ethan and QSD Sniper came to my apartment and we just finished like eating out. And we were like, oh, let's go work on some of Creature Quest and try to think of a little more creatures to put in our quest. And... We are like, I feel like we need to have at least one good creature. Or, like, one that's at least on our side. Because we've, we're opposing, like, the gnomes and the night flyer and stuff. And then I was a little annoyed that day at the, time, at the like, moment. I don't know, remember why. But I remember I, like, just like in a cartoon, when they, like, look at, like, a, a two objects and they just combine them together. <laughs> I said doorkeeper because i closed the door of my truck and ethan said what what are you talking about <laughs> the doorkeeper <laughs> the doorkeeper name is so stupid but it, it it's leroy lock is so much better because mm-hmm. it's it, he sounds like an actual guy the doorkeeper i feel like has so much more like lore we behind also came the name. up with like multiple other creatures as well that we just didn't use because it, they didn't really fit and they didn't really work Mm-hmm. It would have just been too much. Would well, you want to? Um, do you want to explain the original powers of Leroy Locke, aka the Doorkeeper, so back when he was the, the Doorkeeper? Keeper, well, his powers were going to be that he could 
open any door, no matter how locked it was, and he could also create doors, and he could make, like, he could open the front door to Pudog's house, and it would go into, like, a bank vault or something. Like, he could open a door, and it would go to another door. Kind of like a Doctor Strange portal. <clears throat> so, like, he could open the door of, like, his room, and then go into some random person who lives in uh, Mexico. Mm-hmm. He'd go into their house. Yeah. Through his door. Um, and he also could pick locks. He could. But then he just kind of got turned into Leroy Locke, who could just open any lock. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's, he's not very good at it, I don't think, because... He, I think he's uh, like... he. Well, that's why he doesn't... He just kind of jibber-jabbers and stuff. Well, he's, he's kept in that box with a lock on it, so he can't be too good at, at lock picking. Yeah, he was able to get out one time because he smelled those Nilla wafers, and he attacked those Nilla wafers in, like, the half point of the movie. But, like... No, dude. Leroy Lott, canonically, is like a little baby. He, he <laughs> I don't know when Mason got this guy, canonically. Dude, I haven't, like, talked There's so much it. background noise right now in my house. What is happening? My sister's, like, screaming, and Sophie is barking. Ah! I said whole house bad. <laughs> I don't know when QSD Sniper canonically got Leroy Locke. I haven't thought that much into Leroy Locke as a character. Maybe we'll expand upon it. I hope so, because we put so many resources into him. Yeah, and if you want to go into that now about what it took to build Leroy Locke, we can talk about that real quick. So, when we were, like, thinking about him at first, me and Emil thought, oh, we got this, and... We were going to try and go to, like, Walmart and get stuff, but no. So then they didn't have what we wanted, so we ended up going to Hobby Lobby. We spent $80 that first trip buying materials for him. We were like, oh, this is probably enough. We got this. Well, we got back to Emil's house. I stayed over there till like, it was late. It was, like, 10, 30, 11. I was working on it. I could not figure it out. I was, I was stumped. Mm-hmm. So then... uh. I went home and I was like, um, Jayla, can you help me with this? Because she's very craftsy. She she does all these arts and crafts stuff. And she made plushies with me before. So I thought, you know, she would be better than just me trying to do this. Um, and she said, sure. So she looked at what I did and she said, what are you doing? <laughs> That's not how you make a, a puppet. And I was like, what? And the puppet I was making was like, extremely small as well Mm -hmm. it would have been more like a a hand puppet thing that Leroy Locke was like a a full like he's a giant yeah dude he Um, is maybe about like three feet tall maybe he's big Mm -hmm. he's big he is kind of the size of like a toddler if we wanted to we could say that Leroy Locke is like toddler size right now because he is a little baby and we could just make someone Leroy Locke in the future. <laughs> they grow up. They have, like, button chops. Yeah, they weird. look like Beast from X-Men. <laughs> so after I heard that, you know, I did it wrong, the next day after that, um, I was going to Costco for my mom. So on the way, I stopped at Hobby Lobby again, and I spent $40 more buying even more supplies. And I thought, okay, this should, this should probably be enough to, to finish them off. So then I brought all the stuff to her. She worked on it. And it took her a while, like two-ish weeks, three weeks maybe, to finish them. And at some point throughout then, she realized, what are y'all doing? Because our original idea for, like, clothes was we were just going to give them, like, a little, like, wizard cloak. And she's like, no, bro, you're not doing this. So we went back to the store um, to, and spent 40 more dollars to make him an outfit. And that's why he's so dapper. Because the clothes was designed properly beforehand, and she knew how to do it. First, but before we continue on Creature Quest, I'm going to give a little background about why we are filming this, and it's kind of like an emergency that we're filming this. So, this weekend, uh, the weekend Creature Quest comes out, which in hindsight, we probably should have filmed this podcast a lot earlier, but that was a fault Oops. of, like... Both of us combined, I believe. Yeah, it was like a timing thing. Yeah, it was just a horrible timing thing. Because this weekend, the same weekend, Creature Quest is coming out. Ethan and I are both moving into college. I am going to my sophomore year. Ethan's going to his freshman year. But yeah, this weekend is like... 
it's so busy for us. So tomorrow, uh, Pudog has to move into, uh, has to go back to college. Yeah, we're filming this then, on the, the 15th. So the day after that, I'm going to be busy because it's my sister's birthday party. And then the day after that, I move into college, and that's also the day Creature Quest comes out. Mm-hmm. And we can't film Dog Talk um, the day of Dog Talk having to happen. Yeah. So it was kind of like a rush thing, like, we got to film today. Mm-hmm. It was like, we have to film today. And then the thunder, Zeus attacked our houses at the same time, and Ethan had a whole house mad type thing. I don't really know what's happening. Like, I literally, before this happened, I went out out there, and, you know, Tristan, the, the forest goblin, he was laying out on the couch, you know, playing his Roblox. My mom was quietly watching TV. Uh, I think what happened was my sister came home. She might have brought her friend or something, and they're tempting Sophie. I think that's what's happening. Do you think that's what's happening? Sophie is my dog. Yeah, Sophie is his dog, and Sophie... She's wild. ...is wild. Sophie is a wild dog. But I feel like that's enough about um, our excuses of why this dog talk (laughs) may be the worst one. It it won't be worse than the Aiden Avocado one, I don't think. Can't be. Can't, can't be, be. Can't be. But I do think that um, we can go back to Creature Quest. What's another? Do we? Did we finish talking about Leroy Lock? I'm sorry. We. I'm sorry, guys. That is kind of unhinged right now. I, I'm just gonna finish my thought over the whole course of you know spending on him. I think it was about one sixty mm-hmm. on him. You could maybe round it to like one seventy ish. Um, he was a pretty expensive puppet, and that's not counting labor. You know, if you would have got someone else to make it, it would have been very expensive yeah. kind of size. But he came out really cool. Um, the only issue is he's kind of hard to like, control, like the mouth thing, mm-hmm. because Jayla's friend helped her make the mouth, and they made the mouth to like their hand size, which is small. And so unless you have, like small hands your hands are so cramped in there and it's like hard to control him yeah like that's why ethan had to do it because i have much bigger hands than ethan and he was like yeah well i i think i had the smallest hands out of like all of us and then he's so big so you have to lay on the floor and have your hand like stretched up Uh so you're not in the shot my whole arm was like cramping after doing that like it seems like it's like so little of him in the movie like he's in there like maybe a minute of screen time Mm -hmm. but it was a a bit of work probably less than a minute honestly we gotta use him again we have to use him again there's no way we made him just for this but he we have to use him again no matter what so if you didn't understand Leroy Locke then you will get some more lore on him I think this was also the most expensive Pudog production. I think so. I think so too. Like like overall funding and stuff. Like we actually kind of had like props and we had like a intricate set. The only other movie that really did something kind of comparable to this was the Ethan Johnson Holiday Spooktacular, but that was a bit different because that was just oh Halloween decorations. Mm-hmm. Also, you just this made the same like, mistake as me. You called it the Ethan Johnson Holiday Spooktacular. I did the same thing. You know, last time. Halloween is a Halloween is a. Holiday. And we had the same argument two time. episodes ago, man. <laughs> it's a holiday. It's a holiday. What do you think? What was your favorite little creature in this one? The the. Okay. The night flyer. Probably my favorite creature is. Let me let me rank them from my least favorite to favorite. My favorite one, is probably, uh, Leroy Locke. Second favorite is probably the Night Flyer. Third favorite's probably the Gnomes. Uh, fourth favorite's probably the, um, the the Skinwalker guy at the end. Spoilers, spoilers. But yeah, that let's was get a... into that because when when we were watching that, I kind of I, I I picked up a vibe that was not supposed to be picked up. Yeah, and I have to go back <laughs> yes. and fix that because that's not the vibe intended. So whenever I watch it, I don't know if he's going to change it for the final cut, but it kind of seemed like Pudog 2 to himself, and, like, that's just what happened. Like, it didn't really seem like it was the skinwalker killed him. Mm-hmm. It kind of just looks like he killed himself and his soul was, like, exiting his body. Mm-hmm. Which, I will say, is not 
the way I intended it to go. If you've watched the the Forest Goblin uh, special for Earth Day, uh, there was a little creature or something breathing, watching the Forest Goblin play with an umbrella. I tried to make it as obvious as possible, so I'm hoping that this issue that me and Ethan picked up on is just an us thing. <laughs> it might also be because the movie isn't finished, so like all the sound effects and the music it and could stuff be. isn't all there, like the coloring, editing. It might just be something that's like, it also might just be something that like, I'm weird, and I pick that up. Maybe. I mean, I kind of got the vibe too once you brought it up, but I just, I want to be fully transparent. That is not what I was trying to do. Pudog 2 did not do that. But also, doesn't this mean that uh, Pudog 1, 2, and 3 go to heaven? Technically. Because Pudog 2 died first. Technically. Yeah. <laughs> All dogs go to heaven. All dogs go to heaven, dude. Just like the, <laughs> just like the movie. That's what, it mean. That's what I was trying to do because I did. Okay. Let me explain to you where my mind was at when I did this. So, I set up the plot line in Pudog Movie 2 that Pudog 1 desperately does not want to go to hell. It was set up in there that we had to make Pudog 2 a good person. At the end of that movie, Pudog 3 makes Pudog 2 a good person by giving him back quackers. In the Ethan Johnson Halloween Spooktacular, which was the next movie, we set up the Skinwalker. Which, it's revealed in this movie and from the two dog talks ago... That Ethan Johnson Halloween it's Spooktacular a was a dream. It's not the same Skinwalker, but it is a Skinwalker. That is the one that showed up at the end of Creature Quest. The I think we don't really have much development on it in the Christmas special, but in the Four Scotland special, have a clip of the the little creature in the woods watching the Forest Goblin play with the umbrella that Pudog 2 leaves in the woods. But, I don't know, do you think there's any other crazy things in this movie? I don't know. But, do you want to talk about, like, kind of basic stuff? You know, I'm still, I'm still curious. What if we create an origin for Leroy Locke right now? How about he is a species that... Like a... May, like he's a... Like a Yoda he's a species? type? He's some sort of cryptid species that Mason mm-hmm. knows... Of, I mean, oh wait, can I say that? Yeah, you can say Mason. That Mason knows about, and so he hunted them down and killed them all, but kept the egg of their last child. They lay, they lay eggs? They lay eggs. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's, that's where Leroy Locke comes from. And that's from. why he keeps them in a little crate. Because he's, he's, he knows. Mm-hmm. Do you think? That's where QSD's hyper's been all this time. I also say that uh, Leroy Locke is a vegetarian and because uh qsts sniper does not know how to take care of him so he feeds him like grass i don't think he's a vegetarian whenever whenever he bit my leg he was like oh this is great because he's only eaten grass and vanilla wafers oh well that was okay well that was what i was saying about why i don't think he's a vegetarian but yeah i kind of (laughs) i like that origin story of him just being fed (laughs) grass and vanilla wafers as a treat so once he gets the vanilla wafer, he doesn't want to be... I never thought about it like that, but yeah. <laughs> he ate human leg, and then he said, nah, I ain't going back now. <laughs> now he's uh, carnivorous. I, I wonder, since it's been established that he's like a toddler, will he grow up? Yeah, you know what? Since I said that in this dog talk, next time we see Leroy Lock, he'll be grown up a little bit. I, I really like the, the Leroy Locke character. He sounds like Stitch. Mm-hmm. I was imagining him to sound, like, kind of more like, Urgh. Kind of like, I don't a, know why like I was a troll, imagining him to sound almost? Like that. Yeah, kind of like a, a troll. We were supposed to have a troll in this one. We had so many other creatures we were supposed to have. There was this one that was like a, what was it, like she wanted love? Oh, yeah, we were going to do Lust, Lady Lust. She was supposed to be in it, because we were going to make all the creatures based off of, like, Seven Deadly Sins or whatever. So glad we didn't do that. Because then that would be leading even more into the the biblical aspects of the Pudog universe. Which we're going to start leaning out of. It would have made Creature Quest like an hour long. To have like we had what three creatures in this? We had. I guess four if you count Forest Goblin. And it was 30 minutes. We had 
Night Flyer, he's not technically a creature, but he has powers, so I won't count him. But we have two gnomes, uh, a third Forest Goblin, a Leroy Locke, and the Skinwalker. So that's five. See, but we were counting the gnomes as one in our... Well, we can do it... At, yeah, if we do it as one, then that's um, four. I just feel like if we would have added, like, even two or three more creatures into this movie, it would have been so long. Because mm-hmm. then would we have would have been, like, to, at least 50 We minutes. would have to set up everything. Because, like, the creatures we have right now, they fit. But, like, where would you fit, like, a whole nother character who's a woman who wants love? Yeah, and where are we going to fit, like, Jason the Troll... Like where, like where would they fit? You'd have to go out and find them. Mm-hmm. Creature Quest also went through such like a a trial in its creation. I don't like so. This is just kind of like a little a little drop of how these movies work. It was originally not even supposed to be a poo dog movie. It was gonna be like a we were gonna we we're trying to think of like oh what's some SCPs we could do to make something like that because we're trying to make some unrelated stuff, but then it just kind of. You know, uh, Mason, he's the one who plays QSCS Sniper, for those who don't know. He was here. He kept on, like, finding these, like, ones that are like, dude, this would be awesome. And it's, like, it, it, just, like, this, like, goblin that, like, kills people. And we're like, dude, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, it's a little goblin <laughs> who runs up to people and kills them. <laughs> like, how are we going to make a movie about that? And then um, we, he had, like, the pizza that you'd, like, close the box and then you'd open it up and you'd have, like, whatever kind of pizza you want. We, we were going to put that in Creature Quest, but we never did. Eventually, we were just like, well, then, Mason, if you want these, like, weird things, why don't we make a movie where you go around and, like, kill them? You'd be, like, a, a monster hunter. Mm-hmm. And he was like, dude, that's awesome. <laughs> I love that. I love that idea, <laughs> dude. And then we just didn't do it. <laughs> we didn't. We didn't. Because, I mean, we, the, the first time we've had, like, a death death, in the Poo Dog movies, where it's, like, been, like, a big deal, I think has been, like, kind of, like, Poo Dog too. Yeah, definitely. I mean, everybody There's else, been... everybody else, we just kind of, they got shot, and then we didn't really elaborate on it, and the bullet looked, like, really bad. Like, there's been other deaths, but they've never been, like, that level, I feel. Mm-hmm. This movie was, like, the most graphic or violent of any of the Poo Dog movies. Yeah. Just because there was, like, uh, fake blood. Yeah, I mean, the fake blood, I don't think it looks that realistic. It looks realistic enough for what we're doing, but, like... But, I mean, we've never done anything like that before. Yeah, it was kind of a lot of... If anything, Creature Quest was kind of a lot of, like, experimentation. It was, and, you know, I'm I'm excited to see what else you'll do in the future Mm -hmm. with these, like, effects. Yeah. Like, I mean, I don't know. Now that you've I don't know if you... I I don't know if I've, like, been, like, said this publicly or, or anything... But whenever we have an idea to do something and do it good, we try to try it out in an earlier movie or something. Like, we needed to figure out how to, like, frame, like, car shots and stuff for, like, the White Share Mafia scene in the Poodog movie, too. So then we started doing more car shots. Like, we did the car shot in... We did the stuff in The Grunch. And we did the car shots in Dreaming of White Shirt Christmas and stuff like that. And then... We would like, oh, well, we need to learn how to do scenes more in the dark. So we'd figure out how to use lighting, and then we'll gradually put this in. And I think that's, like, the easiest way for us to do it, you know? Like, this was the uh, our first one with green screen. It was, and it was, it was the first one with a couple of things. It, it was the first one with green screen. It was the first one with anyone who flies. It was the first one with blood. It was the first one with... Like, a lot of, I mean, cool different shots. Like, with the, when the gnome turns from, like, human gnome to statue gnome, that, like, sparkly stuff, I think this is the first time you've ever done anything like that. Yeah, like VFX or anything, yeah. That was kind of a learning experience as well. Mm-hmm. A lot of this movie was, like, learning. The whole thing with the um, analog horror teasers that tried to help me make the uh, local 85 thing. I mean... Even just, um, like, set design, I feel like this was a good lesson in it and, like, how to set stuff up, mm-hmm. how to find stuff. Yeah. Um, making props, all that stuff. I don't know. I feel like this was a, a, a good experience with that. Now, I feel like what, what you need to do is uh, figure out how to find music. Yeah. <laughs> 
this is a this is a problem. It's the movie comes out in in three days. You have seventy what three hours because it comes out well seventy two hours and thirty minutes comes out at seven comes out comes out at seven man. I still got 632 time. 6:32 right now. Hey, I'm I'm guarantee you. We're, this is on a Monday, like the 19th right now. Also, by the way, happy birthday, Adam. Today is Adam's Adam the Leaker's Adam! birthday. Yo, it's Adam the Leaker's birthday. Shout out to my boy Adam, August 19th. But um, happy birthday, bro. Today is August 19th. When this is out, I can guarantee you, Ethan, there was at least more music than what you saw in that creature quest. When by the time I it's uploaded, I believe me too. You have, you have three days, and I have no plans Saturday. I have no plans Saturday besides editing. I mean, it does come out late on Sunday, so you could really edit it as long as you're done by like maybe lunchtime or like one. It would be fine. Ethan, it's gonna be okay. I I swear, it's 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 gonna be okay. I swear. (laughs) I don't know, man. I don't know. But um, is there anything else we learned from Creature Quest um that we will never ever do again? I don't know. I, I think, uh, uh, like we said, we love to do yeah. experimentation in all of our stuff. And since it's so late in the dog talk, I'm just going to say it here. We're not going to go too into detail. And Ethan, I don't want you to try to go further into detail than I already do. But um, we're going to start making a lot more outside of the Dog universe stuff. Because I don't want us to have Dog 3 brain rot anymore. He said not to go into it too much, but the brain rot is is bad, bro. Yeah. Yeah. It's bad. It's horrible. We can't, the other day we were we were thinking of ideas, and we were thinking of, like, a, a poo dog idea, and it was, like, rolling off the, the tongue. You know, we got it. We got it. And we tried to think of an uh, unrelated idea, and we were uh, stumped. Yeah. <laughs> it's brain rot. We actually have it's, like Pudog Three brain rot. We've been doing this for so long. Like the most creative thing that we've ever done since we did. I started making movies was probably the Grunch, and it was probably why people liked it. Cause it's unrelated, and then and then you said, ah, yeah, we'll do more Pudog. Like yeah. <laughs> you know, people said they liked it, but I mean, did they really, <laughs> or did they want to see Baham Dog? <sighs> yeah. So. Guys, uh, sorry to hear that. Uh, we sorry to tell you this, you know, so so early in the morning or late at night or whenever you're watching this. But I hope you were sitting down because we are gonna pump the brakes a little bit on these poo dog uploads, and that's what I'm gonna get more into detail on on that update of the poo dog three YouTube channel coming out soon. Is there any any questions left about Creature Quest that you have that you have that I have to ask me to ask to you? Ask me. Okay. Um. What was your favorite day? What was, like, not your favorite day of filming, but what was your favorite, like, um, I guess setting to film in? Because I'll I'll say real fast, a lot of this was kind of miserable. (laughs) I'll say my least favorite setting was the woods. Yeah. Because there's infinite mosquitoes. Oh, my God. I, I literally was wearing socks all the way up they got like on my ankle i had like long like knee length socks or whatever you saw them in the movie whenever i have like the the leg bite mm-hmm. they go up to like my my mid shin i had bites on my ankle because they bit through the sock because i didn't spray bug spray there i think we they were so I th- bad i think we used the whole bottle of bug spray through it was it was terrible it was awful and then we had to go back another day and i had more bug bites. And I was just kind of like tweaking at that point because we filmed all of like the scenes on my front porch by then. And it was like, yeah, it was kind of bad. I man. Think, you know, I think my favorite setting to film at was inside of your house. You know, because that's it, it fair. Was air conditioned. That's fair. And well, you don't like the new fans that we have in my living room. Uh, okay. So, so let me. This is just an issue I have, I guess. I hear the fans running, and I'm like, oh, that's going to mess up the audio. It's going to make it sound No, 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 no. So it's, it's not even off. that. It's not even that, that you, you're worried about the audio. You just get cold within, like, two seconds of being <laughs> under them. Like, this is a thing that happens when we're not filming. Like, you'll just walk into my living room and turn off the fans. And I'm like, what are you doing? 
they were this on for a true. reason. And you're like, oh, I'm just a little cold. And I'm like, what? <laughs> well, my at, at my house, like, the thermostat is set to, like, 75. So, you know, I go into your house and it's like, oh, it's chilly. Yeah. Yeah, like a normal person's like house. Like a normal person's house. I, I'm not uh, sorry that I don't have a lizard in my house, Ethan. Like an actual oh, this lizard. Is, this is actually something interesting. He hates the lizard. My sister has a bearded dragon. Oh my god. I take him out and he, he's like, Get that thing away from me. He doesn't even have teeth. It has no teeth and he's scared it's gonna like bite him or something. No teeth? No teeth. Huh. Actually no, I'm I it bit me one day. I thought my finger was food because my sister hadn't fed it. And she was like, no, I don't want to feed it. He's going to poo if I feed him. I don't know what her deal is, but I was Yeah, like any, an- like any creature eat- does. <laughs> he was trying to eat my finger. And I was like, you need to feed him. And she was like, no, just let him nibble on you. And I was like, what? What do you mean? Leroy Locke activities. <laughs> when he bites you, he doesn't have teeth, but like his mouth... He has, like, a strong bite. Like, it feels like something biting. Is it like when a gecko bites you, but they just, like... Yes, but but stronger. Oh, my God. Like those little green anoles? Mm-hmm. It's like those things, but, like, a stronger bite. Because he's bigger. I don't mess with... What is he, a bearded dragon? I don't mess with bearded dragons, man. They frighten then me. Then I don't mess... I don't mess with Dexter. What, my cat? He always runs away and hides. Dude, that's why he quit Dog Plus, dude. Nah, he quit because he's, he's a D1 napper. He was too busy slurping on his water fountain. Yeah. You know, he doesn't even, you know, guys, this is fake news. He doesn't even like his water fountain. He does. He rather he does a like regular wa- bowl. Dexstar does like his water fountain, okay? He rathers a regular bowl. He does not rather a re- regular bowl. See, the issue with Dexstar, now we're going off on a tangent now, but I don't care. Um, the issue with Dexstar is that he used to put his food... Like, he'd pick it up with his little hand, his little paw, and he'd put the, the, the food into his water dish. Dude, that's disgusting. It's disgusting. And then he would just not want to drink his water. So we were like... Well, why would he put it, the food in there? Because he's stupid, dude. I love that cat, <laughs> but, like, oh, my God, why does he do that? He also... He's, yes. like, almost, like, eight years old, and he still bites, like, wires all around my house. One day he's going to get electrocuted. I, I keep trying to tell him that. I'm like, get away from that. But he's like, nah, man, I love these uh, little wires, dude. They feel good on my teeth or something. I don't know. See, see, I, I don't know why, but when you made him talk, I imagine, like, Zach talking. So I don't know if that <laughs> has any correlation. He might kind of look. I feel like Zach kind of looks like Dexter. <laughs> no, dude, Zach looks like a fox. A fennec fox? We dude. talked about this on episode two. Oh, is this really what we talked about episode? I, this feels like a season one episode of Dog Talk right now. <laughs> We're just yapping. We're just yapping the yap right this now. This is not the topic. But, okay. No, let me go back to Dexter real quick. The reason why he has a new water fountain is because of the, the food thing. But something he did, it's like a little cat water fountain. Maybe I'll put a picture on the screen. Who knows? I, I might not have time to edit that. Um, But he has a little cat water fountain. And... He still somehow manages to put the food in the water fountain. <laughs> and it's not even like th- the same height. <laughs> I think what he's doing is he has it in his mouth. He's eating. And he's like, oh, I'm actually thirsty. So he goes over to the water and starts drinking it before he chews his food. Oh, my God. It out of his mouth. <laughs> this cat is so, he's such a goofy little guy, dude. And then, yeah, like, he, I like, think he knows when I'm filming, too. Like, I, I, I was filming a video the other day, and he walked in my room. Well, like, he, he was at the door, and he started, like, tweaking. Like, he was like, meow, 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 by the door. And then I was like, okay, well, Dexter, let me let you in. So I, I let Dexter into the room, and then he, he, like, not runs around, but he makes, like, four laps around my room, and then starts, like, nudging the tripod. Like, what are you doing? Why'd you come in here just to, like, mess up my stuff? <laughs> he wants to be with you, man. He's like, you don't ever spend time with me. You're always making these videos. Uh, if you are watching Dog Talk and you haven't watched Creature Quest, what are you doing? Of course, because we my, just spoiled the whole thing for you, dude. Pudog Two dies. My, my statement, dude. Pudog Two dies. Why are you here? Why are you here? Why are you, here? you should be mourning the loss movie. of like we had like two 
two like very important people in fiction die this year. We had Pudog Two and George Cooper. I should be seeing the same kind of like love and respect that yeah, George that Cooper it's... got. I saw they're making a show about just Georgie now. They are. Where? How? How can they do this? They did that because they don't like Sheldon. He's a terrible, terrible, terrible little boy. So they just aren't including him anymore. No, because he lives in like California now. Because he's on the Big Bang Theory. I just don't. I don't get it. I don't. What's the point? Who cares about Georgie? See, that's. I mean, I think the thing is, so many people like got obsessed with young Sheldon towards the end of like the the series was airing so they're like oh well um well maybe we just uh we drag it out a little longer we can make a part two it's it's also not even like a um like film the same way it's like film like a sitcom which is weird i think we've covered everything Mm -hmm. with creature quest on this one i think so too you know comment down below uh, if you love Creature Quest, comment a green heart emoji. I don't, if that's not a thing, then comment the green dragon emoji. If you hate Creature Quest, comment an emoji with Chinese symbols on no, it. No, dude. They, why not? If you hate Creature Quest, comment a yellow heart. And if you think that I should never make a movie again... Comment a black heart. Oh? What? Bro's emo. I was just saying, just in case they hated it so much, do, like, the yellow and black combination. Because then we can have, like, Batman in the comments. What about the green? Where's the green fit in? Well, if, if you loved that's... Creature Quest and you want me to continue the um, Poodog universe until the day I die, you do a white heart. So then we can have, like, Green Lantern, too. Do a green and white is, heart. Is there a white heart? Yeah, I think there's a white heart. There's like a rainbow of hearts, I think. Okay, I'll believe you on this one. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. The next episode of Dog Talk is going to be filmed when we're both in college. Crazy. Crazy news I'm here. Cu- I'm curious to see, you know, how it's going to play out. I hope... My my roommate is going to be a uh, lag soda Brayden. I hope he doesn't try and, like insert himself he may try to bang pots and pans together in the background but i don't really know if he does insert himself then we might just get like a third person on the podcast <laughs> we're gonna be stuck with him i mean I don't, like, hey guys. I don't have a similar problem to you because my roommate has never been associated with the Dog 3 movies well, so your roommate is kind of less of like a roommate and more of like a flat mate like y'all have separate rooms yeah you and brayden like sleep across the same room together yeah. But so. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe Braden will just be quiet in the background the whole time. Who knows? He can be our guy in the chair. He'll be our guy in the chair. He'll look some things up and then we'll be like, hey, Braden, uh, is it true that no baby was born on December 6, 2006? And then. Braden, look up what happened uh, on 1984. Look up what happened then. Yeah, but I don't know. Uh, I mean, so we didn't really know what to do this week for uh, a dog talk just because our lives are so hectic right now. And I had to go all the way to the beach this week just so I could film a Poodog Plus video. Um, that's why you went? That's why I went. I, I, f- I went just so I could film a Poodog Plus video. But of So that's why, like, if Creature Quest is in the state it is, it's because I had to film. I care a lot about Poodog Plus. But, um... Yeah, so this dog talk kind of just serves as a, a us explaining Creature Quest and slight updates about what the future is going to hold for dog talk and us. All right, look, man, I'm just telling you this now. This is not legal advice, but I don't think you can use a Poo Dog Plus video as admissible tax write-off. All right, I don't think that's how the law works. I mean, it was a long video. I, I don't know. I don't think... I don't... You ought to talk to your lawyer about this, but I don't think. Do, should I, I have a lawyer? How it works. Should I have one? Isn't uh, Rajan your lawyer? Oh, bro, I'm going to jail. <laughs> <laughs> but if you guys have any real questions about Creature Quest that we didn't cover in today's podcast, I am more than willing to be active in the comment section and answer some stuff for you. I hope you guys really did enjoy Creature Quest because I sure put my whole effort like any 
all the effort. I put every ounce of effort that I could into Creature Quest. If something looks bad, if something looks like crap, it's because I don't know how to do it yet. I, I, I mean, I do this for every movie, but I put so much effort into Creature Quest this whole summer. I've been locked in, like, weekly on that thing. And uh, I, I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If, if you didn't, it's fine. But try to get them next time. I don't know. Ethan, do you want to do your outro now? Dog talk is like lightning before the thunder. That's it. I, That's the outro. Okay. Thank you for watching. Bye.